Nikita, specializing in global health. Good evening and thank you for your time. Good evening. How are you? Very well, thank you. Uh, let's make a start with what the latest modeling is suggesting in Ontario, saying that we are well into the sixth wave and we will be seeing an uptick in hospitalizations because of the number of infections. How are you assessing these latest projections? There's a lot there to unpack. First is that the number of new cases per day is astonishing. 100,000 yes. to 120,000 cases per day. Remember back when a few hundred cases per day was show-stopping? and a few thousand was unbelievable. Now we're in the hundreds of thousands and it barely makes the news very often. Interesting, right? Now, <laughs> we're, we're not seeing the same lock step uh, from uh, infection numbers to hospitalization numbers to death as we did in the past, but it seems logical we'll see hospitalization increases relatively soon. The question is how many? And the big unknown is how much immunity is there in the population to prevent that strong deleterious outcome. We just don't know. The best we can do in the meantime is push for more vaccination to make sure that the kind of population immunity we can measure is present. Right, so a lot to digest, like you said. But let me ask you this, of course, when they say that hospitalizations uh, will be on the rise because of the number of infections in the province, then we have the long weekend coming up. And many people are thinking like COVID-19 as the pandemic is done with, it's just a mild cold or a fever, you stay at home, you have some pills, and you can get over it. What would you say? What would you suggest? Well, that is true for a lot of people, especially given the extraordinary power of vaccination. If you've had your three doses, it probably will be a not a mild cold, but a non-lethal experience. But remember, not everyone has that level of immunity. And so you can't me your way out of a we problem. So remember that there are people out there, kids under five who aren't vaccinated, the uh, elderly who are, or the immunocompromised who have a, a, a high probability of a bad outcome. We protect them by containing ourselves, by limiting our unnecessary exposures and by wearing a mask when we are indoors. I encourage everyone to think like that. Let me talk to you about, um, you know, in terms of how we treat COVID-19. Of, of course, the vaccine is to prevent severe illnesses, but now there are lots of pills also in the market. The latest one about uh, is, is the AstraZeneca one. Your take on how effective these pills really are and what's happening on that front? Well, they're pretty good for what they do. The question is, can you get them? Are, are you eligible to get them? Will you know that you're eligible to get them? You have to first get the disease, then have a bad experience with the disease, be tested to confirm you have that disease, go to a hospital that has the drug and receive it. A lot of steps have to be taken before you receive one of these remarkable drugs. It's better to prevent the infection in the first place uh, to avoid having to take one of these drugs. The new um, uh, antibody-like pill for the immunocompromised is important. It gives people who cannot be vaccinated a kind of experience akin to vaccination. And that takes away a lot of the stress on the population side but it won't have an enormous impact on the numbers transmitting through the community because that population is relatively small. We will get to the point where the treatment options are so ubiquitous and so powerful that in coordination with vaccination, this won't be a public health nightmare it currently is. We're not quite there yet, but we will get there. We're not quite there yet, but I just lastly want to uh, check with you on a going forward where this pandemic is concerned because by the week, I would say that the approach towards the pandemic amongst people is, of course, more relaxed. Coming summer, we know that usually numbers tend to go down as well. What are you expecting to see in the next, you know, like a month or two with the current trends as well? It's a good question. I think people will start to think less about COVID. I don't know if that's good or bad. I think the numbers will come down, uh, both the number of new cases per day. The number of hospitalizations, we're probably going to see uh, an increase and a sustained increase because it takes a long time to get out of the hospital. But the diminished transmission in the summer will be inspiring and people will reclaim much of their lives by then. The big unknown is what happens in the fall. Are we going to be subject to a new wave? That depends on how much vaccination occurs and whether or not a new variant arises. I, I would hate to add, yes, the new variant factor, of course, is always a mystery, isn't it? it is. We leave it at that for now. Reva Dionandan, epidemiologist and science communicator specializing in global health. We appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.